Hey, it's Mr. Wynn, and let's win some chemistry. We're going to do a lab on precipitation, so you need to have your notes out on solubility, and let's get right to it. I can't emphasize enough how useful these five guidelines are because it tells you in plain English what's going to dissolve and what will remain insoluble. So basically, it helps you identify what your spectator ions should be, that's your soluble product, and what your precipitate which is your insoluble product should be. So you're gonna use rule two a lot, okay? Because nitrate is a very common polyatomic that comes up and rule one and three has a lot of overlap. And then um, occasionally you'll use rules four and five as you do this post lab for analysis two. So let's see pre-lab 1A together. I wrote out the balance equation it's a double displacement reaction, so you get silver chloride and barium nitrate to come out. And by rule three, silver chloride is your solid precipitate. And by rule two, barium nitrate is soluble. These are the spectator ions. They dissolve in water. These are the 11 chemicals we're going to use in lab today. You will have to name all 11, but I'll give you four of them. So from left to right, you have ammonium phosphate, aluminum nitrate, potassium iodide, and silver nitrate. This is how you're carrying out the reactions. We're gonna use a transparency over some white paper. So we have our chemicals, and the easiest way to do this is you just go uh, row by row, and then column by column. So I find my aluminum nitrate, and then I just put drops in there. Okay, so I just go all the way across, drop, drop, drop. Okay, so just all the way across. So I just have one drop of aluminum nitrate just waiting in the rows. Now do the same for potassium bromide, KBR. Just go across the rows. Again, drop, 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 all the way across. So now let's just pretend that all the rows have been filled across left to right. Now it's our turn to go top to bottom in the columns with the appropriate chemical. So in this case, it's sodium hydroxide, and I'm just gonna go drop by drop until I reach the bottom there. Okay, so we did the reactions. If you notice on the transparency, it's been cut into a triangle. The bottom half has all been crossed out because those are duplicate reactions. So for example, in the very first grid, okay, you have a duplicate reaction of aluminum nitrate and aluminum nitrate, which is why half of it's been crossed out. If you look carefully, you'll find out what I'm saying. Let's talk about how you do analysis too. So of the 20 reactions here that you see, 20 of them had some sort of color change or it turned opaque and cloudy. That means a precipitate was formed. And I want to look at an example where there was no precipitation. So that means it remained clear. So there was a reaction that's there on the grid that I painted in red. And then you could see where those two boxes intersect. It was barium chloride and silver nitrate. There was no reaction that occurred between those two chemicals. So that means that would be something that you wouldn't pick for analysis too, because there was no reaction that occurred. Let's examine a reaction where you get a precipitate to form. So this is the one that I boxed in orange. You have potassium iodide and you have lead nitrate there at the top. And when you combine those two, it forms lead iodide, which is that yellow dot that you see right there. It's also painted in orange, and that's your solid precipitate. That thing is insoluble by rule three. And then by rule two, you have potassium nitrate, which is soluble, so these are your spectator ions. So remember, a spectator ion does not contribute to the reaction, so it doesn't help form the solid. The solid is really the thing that we care about, and in this case, it's PVI, or lead iodide. I'm gonna help you with one more example. So this is the precipitation reaction that I boxed in green. This involves BaCl2, NaOH, and then on the right-hand side, there's a double displacement. So I wrote that out at the top. So you're gonna form BaOH2, which is barium hydroxide and then two molecules of sodium chloride. So by rule five, barium hydroxide is your insoluble precipitate. So that's the rule that states that all hydroxides are insoluble. And then by rule one or by rule three, because this has some overlap, NaCl would be your soluble spectator ions. So let's see what we have to turn in for this lab. 
Okay, so pre-lab 1, which is writing out double displacement reactions. Pre-lab 2, I gave you four of these names. Some of these are also filled in for you. Okay, and analysis 2. So of the 20 reactions that had some sort of color change or it turned opaque or cloudy, pick 9 of them and then do it just kind of like this. So there's a balance equation that you have to write out and then have state two rules for your precipitate and then which one is the spectator ions. So I did a couple examples uh, previous to this. So make sure you have one through nine filled out and your two pre-lab sections and then just submit this to Google Classroom. Okay, cool, thanks for listening. And tune in next time for wind chemistry.